Good morning, everybody. This is, uh, I'm Mark Coleman, uh, your co-host today on Talking Tax here on Think Tech Hawaii, um, your favorite community affairs program. We cover all the world as well, I, I, apparently. Um, anyway, my co-host today, as usual, is Tom Yamachika. He's really the main man here, as usual, on this show. Uh, he's the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and that's why we call it the Talking Tax Show. He's the expert on that subject. He's a private practice, but he's also head of the foundation, which keeps track of all the uh, tax goings on at the legislature and the county councils. Um, today, we're going to talk about a, a tax issue, not a law, not a, not a proposed law or anything like that. We're going to talk about the process of uh, amending your return, if, if so requested by a tax agent. And uh, the, it, it's the basis of the call of the, of the sh show today is a column he wrote recently called uh, Amended Return Equals Guilty Plea. And that sounds kind of ominous. Um, so, Tom, why don't you explain that a little bit? Good morning, everybody, and uh, morning, Mark, and thanks for that uh, wonderful introduction. Um, today, uh, instead of talking about what our legislature is doing, we're, we're, we're talking pretty much about, you know, the uh, the nuts and bolts of uh, what happens in daily life if you are audited? And there are a lot of people getting audited out there. You know, we hear about this uh, every once in a while. And uh, the point of today's show is to get people understanding, you know, some of the tactics uh, that auditors use and, and what the ramifications are for you as a taxpayer. Uh, you have rights, and we don't want you to lose them unwittingly. Now, the uh, the technique we're talking about today um, is called please amend your return. And the way that works is you get into uh, an, a tax audit. Uh, you, you are unfortunately one of the uh, people who are, who are picked for a tax audit. You know, a certain percentage of people get picked for a tax audit every year. And you're with the tax auditor, and the tax auditor asks you for documents. You give it, you give the documents to them just like a regular upstanding citizen. And the auditor then says, okay, I found something. I found uh, this uh, portion of income which you haven't reported. Will you please amend your return to include that item of income? Okay, and um, for for those of us who uh, represent people who are being audited, it's kind of an unusual request because typically what uh, what happens if an auditor finds something is the auditor can write it up on their side and issue what's called an assessment. First, you get a proposed assessment. Uh, you get 30 days to confer with the department. And then if conferring with the department doesn't produce agreement, you get what's called a final assessment. But here the auditor is offering you uh, a means to short circuit all of that by saying, please amend your return. And the question then becomes, well, what happens if you do that? Um... And again, this is just uh, uh, an information show, so uh, we need you as taxpayers to know what's going on. And what's going on is, if you amend your return, uh, the change is coming from you, not from them. And that means you lose your appeal rights. Now, um, when an auditor and you don't agree on a particular issue, the auditor has the right to write you up and assess additional tax. And if you don't agree uh, with that additional tax, then you have appeal avenues. Uh, in Within the department, you can go to the Administrative Appeals Office. That's what it's for. Within... Um, you know, quasi within the department, there is something called the Board of Review, and and those are three people that are uh, on the department's payroll but aren't 
aren't technically part of it that act as a, essentially administrative hearing officers. They'll, you know, they uh, can hear your case and render a decision, uh, but they are not part of the department's chain of command. So they have some independence in that regard. And, uh, the, of course, the other uh, thing you can do is appeal to uh, court. There's uh, a special court called the Tax Appeal Court that you can go to, and they and that court hears uh, disputes like um, not only disputes over interpretation of the tax laws, but also if there are, say, constitutional challenges. If the tax is unconstitutional, then the court has the power to adjudicate that type of challenge. Can you appeal from the tax court if you go that far? Can you go to a regular court at that point? Uh, well, the tax court is a regular court. Oh, it is. It's considered. Yeah, yeah it's considered. A, it's it's uh, basically in the circuit court building, and it's like any other circuit court. It does it just have a different title? But if you had a ruling that you didn't like there, you could appeal it even higher. You could go up. Yeah, uh, you could go to the intermediate court of appeals or to the Supreme Court of Hawaii. Oh, okay, like, cool. Like any other court judgment. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Um. There, there are, you know, a, a little, uh, you know, some quirks in the appeal process that uh, you need to be aware of if you're going to do that. But, uh, but basically, it's the same as appealing from a, a regular circuit court judgment. Now, um, all of that, of course, is going to be denied to you if you amend the return yourself, because again. That change is considered to come from you and not from the department, and uh, and there's a law that says you can't appeal uh, from your own return. Well, is that is that kind of like a Fifth Amendment issue? I mean, is that like testifying against yourself? Of course, a tax return in itself is a Fifth Amendment issue at the at the core, really testifying against yourself. But is that kind of what you think about that? Um. Well, not really. I mean, uh, tax returns are required by law. And, um, you know, courts all over the country have considered, you know, whether taxes are legal, and they are. So, uh... Don't have much uh, choice. Well, I was, I was reading that perhaps, uh, that at least at the federal level, that you do not have a duty to amend your return. If, if something comes up, you don't have to amend it. Um, what would happen then if you didn't amend it? Well, like I said, the agent has the right to assess you. So if the agent thinks you owe more tax than what you've put on your return, uh, your agent can write up an assessment, and that's what you can appeal from. So do you think that they are that when you are unlucky? First of all, do you think how many people do get audited every year in Hawaii on average? Do you know? Uh, I don't know, but I think the national statistics are like around five percent. Okay, and and locally, if so, if you did get audited and and they now if they're pulling this tactic on you, um, are they just are they being malicious? Are they or are they just trying to be efficient? You might say trying to minimize time and and money that uh, that an appeal might involve. Are they just trying to wipe away this right that you have? For their own convenience, or, or are they assuming that you're a bad person and they want to get you, get you, or what? Uh, I think it's more, um, it's easier for them if you don't appeal. You think that's uh, part of a policy? Like they have their meetings and they say, "All right, now go ahead and use a stack that as much as you can. It'll save us a lot of money and time." I I think it is. I mean, I, I've seen. Lots of uh, auditors from different places use it. All it's all over the state. Uh, it's not confined to any one particular place. Uh, it happens all over. So um, I think it's some kind of established policy somewhere. Wow. But I just, uh, you know, that's just my speculation. I mean, there, well, there, there may in fact be. Uh, uh, you know, written documentation for, uh, for this, but um, they haven't made that public. Well, has, has there ever been any uh, court cases challenging this notion, this tactic? 
Or have you ever thought about challenging that tactic? Have you ever been in the... Well, it's, it's, it's very line. easy to undo. You see, sure. if you've amended your return and, uh, and, and you think about it for a while and say, oh, darn, this is not what I wanted to do, uh, as long as you're within the statute of limitations, you can amend your return again. And that's 30 days? No, no, no. It's like three years from oh. uh, the uh, uh, date of your, uh, you know, your your annual return. I see. Have you ever been in a situation like this yourself with a client? Well, yeah. No, I mean, I've... I've um, well, you're familiar with it probably, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, and, and my um, recommendation to them is amend your return again. Uh, like I said, if it's within the statute of limitations, you can do that. And uh, if your uh, amendment is denied, you know, because your, your amendment is going to create a refund claim, because presumably you paid more tax when you filed your amended return. Um, so if you amend again to to get it back to your original number, there's going to be a, a refund that's that's being claimed by you, and and the, and the department can all always say, you know, claims denied. But if they do that, you can appeal from that. So what would so, you, so, you, so your appeal rights come back? Well, well that's great news. Uh, I'm sure everybody would be happy to hear about that. But what what would be the basis for an appeal if you were able to if if that came to be well it's it, it of course we're assuming that uh the the issue that the auditor found is not something you agree with so that's why you would appeal uh it, 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 so it, it, like for example you would challenge the assessment well there there would be no assessment if you amend the return there is no assessment but the, so you see, so you you amend the return once, there's no assessment. You you amend the return again, you have a refund claim. And then, and then, um, uh, when they deny the refund claim, that essentially becomes your assessment. Well, in your article, weren't you saying that um, they come with you and they say they found some income that you failed to report, and so could you please amend your document and that would increase your assessment wouldn't it and 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 i don't know why it, you would necessarily be talking about a refund help me out here i'm maybe i'm not getting it okay so so let's say so let's say you file a um, general excise tax return and uh you report a hundred dollars of income and you pay your four hundred and fifty of tax. The auditor comes up and says, "Hey, um, you uh, got this grant for fifty dollars. You didn't report it, and the grant's taxable income. But you don't, you don't think the grant's ta taxable income, but you amend the return, and you pay another uh, two dollars and twenty-five cents, right?" Mm -hmm. with penalties and interest, presumably. Okay. Um, now, if you if you then listen to this show and and say, well, look, um, I, I have a case that my grant is not taxable, then what you do is you amend your return again to go back to your $100. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, uh, so um, my my actual amount due is uh, is. Four dollars and fifty cents. I paid six seventy five, so I want my two dollars and twenty five cents back, plus the penalties and interest. That's your refund claim. I see. Oh, uh huh. So does this does this tactic apply mostly to GET or 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 to personal income tax, corporate income tax, whatever? Well, it applies to anything. It, I, I see it mostly used on GET oh. because um, uh, GET is. Basically, our Department of Taxation's bread and butter. It's our state's bread and butter. It's also probably where most of the income is sort of a voluntary disclosure, right? Uh, GET, uh, at least a lot of 
deductions and and maybe cash payments and things like that? Well, um, one thing you got to remember about GET, um, it doesn't have deductions pretty much. Oh, but oh, so oh, so that's right. Yeah, yeah. So that's why uh, it's uh, it's our state's bread and butter. All you got to do is deal with the income, and um, there are no deductions to prove up. So, at what point does do they come at you with something like? A fraud claim, and they're really mad about it. Oh, they can they can do that. For example, if um, you charge uh, your customers GE tax, put it on your bill, and you don't pay anything. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Then then they 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 consider that you've defrauded your customers. Um. And they get very, very mad about that. No, oh, well, what, how would they? Okay, so is this a normal court procedure in normal courts, um, where if if you somehow can? How do you look? I'm, I'm trying to anal analogize this to a regular court where somehow you could end up losing your right to appeal. Like if you plead guilty, which is what you're saying here, if you amend your return, you're you're basically pleading guilty. And yeah, and that's it's it's kind of the tax world's equivalent of, of pleading guilty. Yeah, because if you plead guilty in in regular court, um, then consequences then come, right? Okay. And and, and does that mean you can't appeal a, in a regular court down the road? I mean, say, hey, I, I you know I changed my mind. I I'm, I don't feel like I was guilty after all, you know, or whatever. Well, I I think. You know, there's a means for you to change your plea, but um, uh, but I think once you uh, you know, you're up there in the hot seat, and the judge is asking, "What's your plea? What's your plea, man?" And you say guilty. Uh, the judge pronounces the sentence. It's kind of tough to change after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess if you're in prison, maybe you'd have time to put together some sort of a of a of a hey, uh, could we reconsider? The sentence, I suppose, right? But maybe you're always be, still be guilty. Well, you you would have to withdraw your guilty plea first, and and in the tax world, the amend the equivalent equivalent of that is amending your return again, and 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 like I said, there um, there are limits on it. Like for example, if the statute of limitations has passed, uh, you can't. Uh, that that's not available to you. I see. Well, so there, has this ever is this a thing that deserves some legislative attention, perhaps? Well, the 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 same statute uh, that says you can't you can't appeal from your own return it's it's been on the book since the nineteen thirties, I believe. So it's, the, it's oh. so we've had it for a hundred years, and I don't think uh, oh, oh, the legislature yeah. is going to be changing it anytime soon. Oh. Well, do you think there's abuse? Of it, you think this is an abuse? Is really the question. Well, uh, I think in a way, because the the auditors know what amending a tax return means in order in order for, in, in in terms of you know waiving appeal rights. Taxpayers don't have as much information because they've not gone through an audit before. At least most in most cases, so. Uh, they're at an information disadvantage, and uh, that's why you know if you are being audited, you know you should consider being represented by a professional, because um, it's much less likely that an auditor would be able to snow a professional. Yes. Do you think this is something most professionals uh, in Hawaii are familiar with? I believe they either they are or they should be. Hey, what do you know about how many of, of of all the Hawaii taxpayers that there are? Um, do you have any idea of how many are represented by tax accountants, tax professionals? I I don't know. Do you think these cases are mostly filed against people that don't have tax accountants, or the or that this tactic is applied mostly against you know innocent people, so to speak, people who have no clue? Um. Well, audits come up 
against people who have um, no representative and people who do. Uh, not everybody has a professional prepare their return. Uh, for the ones who do have a professional prepare their return, then uh, it's very it's a, a very natural thing for the taxpayer to call in that professional. Um, but for the one who uh, hasn't had a, uh, a professional from the beginning, uh, there's, you know, the, the new step that they got to go through, namely, you know, looking through different professionals, uh, finding someone who uh, meets their needs, and then, you know, going forward with that. What do you think about, I know you're a tax accountant yourself or, or a tax attorney. Uh, maybe maybe you would have a biased opinion on this, but what do you think about uh, people filing their own taxes without without representation, so to speak, a go between someone who can apprise them of all the of all the you know the latest updates in in the IRS uh, and state for tax law, and uh, who you know would be aware of tactics that might trip you up, or and, and that of course would also be there to represent you if there's any problems. How do you think that compares with you know, TurboTax and all these other programs are what people seem to think is really just fine. Maybe it's a matter of how complicated your taxes are, but is there a point at which you really ought to have a tax accountant in your opinion? Well, you know, I, I think, I think you hit it on the head there. It depends on how, co how complicated your return situation is. Uh, the, uh, the more complicated it is, the more, uh, you would need, I think, a professional um, to make sure that uh, that nothing's going wrong. But you know, professionals do have a cost, right? So you have to engage a cost-benefit analysis to, um, right? You know, to to see if it's worth it for you, right? Yeah, I guess most people that I know that rave about the tax programs that you can buy the software usually are saying, yeah, but my taxes are so simple, you know, and, um, but well, I mean, and, and, and you got to realize that, you know, for GET, uh, it's not something for which there's software in the market. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the turbo taxes and so forth is all income tax. Uh huh. That's right. So it's a good help for income tax, but for, uh, for GET, um, people are normally on their own. I mean, this this also applies to um, you know, professional representation of you know large businesses. Um, when I was at PwC, uh, right, and representing, yeah, and re representing businesses of all kinds, uh, most businesses only used accountants uh, to prepare their income tax returns for for sales tax compliance um and not only in Hawaii but in other states the the, the business would usually you know do their own thing or or they would um or or if they were really big with with presence in like you know 30 40 states they would they would go to a a multi-state software company like vertex um mm -hmm. uh and and get help that way but but if you're in like one or two states um, most businesses just do it themselves. Now, so that's, that's been my experience. So, so in this in these cases where the IRS or the, excuse me, the state DOT guy uh, might call you and say, oh, "I noticed that you should be," I'm suggesting that you amend your return. I found some things that you ought to take a look at. Now, th that's because he's looking at your tax return that you've already submitted, and and he's he's challenging something that's already there. He's not saying, "I found some additional income that you didn't report." It could be could be one of the one or both, yeah. And how would he know about additional income that you didn't report? Well, a lot. Um, one one key thing that they do is they compare different types of tax returns that you submit. Every state does that. Okay, so you submit an income tax return, you submit your GET return. If the bases are different, okay, uh, then they're gonna they're, they're gonna ask you how come. Yeah. Oh, okay. based on your own return or based on an average of other people who do a similar thing? 
No, based based on your own returns. You file an income tax return. You file a GET return. They say, look, in in uh, on line seventeen of the income tax return, you admitted to having a hundred thousand dollars of income in Hawaii, but you but you really reported eighty thousand. You know, where's the twenty, man? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> So then the other way is that they challenge something that it, you might have listed, but you didn't consider it taxable? Yeah, that's that's quite possible, too. Uh, are there any other 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 ways people can be tripped up that way? Um, <laughs> Probably thousands, right? Probably thousands, yeah. <laughs> well, it, this is a, a, a favored tactic, apparently, or at least a tactic that DOT people apparently use, but is this something that do you think they do at the federal level? Do you know whether they do this at the federal level? I don't know what they do at the federal level. Do you focus mostly just on state taxes or, or when you're with, you do? That's your... Yes. Tax. That's my thing. State of, state of Hawaii taxes. Right. Right. How, how much does your uh, private practice inform your thinking about what goes on at the legislature? Well, um... You know, I, I do both. So, I mean, like like anybody else in Hawaii, I got two jobs. So, uh, you know, you need you need more more than one job to feed your family usually. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we live in Hawaii, second highest tax burden in the country and highest cost of living, uh, uh, number one. So it's a, a lot of fun to live here in Hawaii if you can do it. Um, Tom, thank you very much for explaining all of this in great detail. Um, you know, the, the tax system is something we all dread dealing with uh, every year. You, you're you're involved with it all year. Uh, I, I have a tax accountant, and I'm always super impressed uh, at, at how anybody can keep up with all of that, all the changes every year at the legislature and so on. But anyway, it's their job. What? Pardon me? It's their job. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, and right, and they have a knack for it, and so hopefully they it's their passion. But thank you very much, Tom. Any last words? Yep. Um, th today was just an educational experience and be better and more indicated taxpayers. Right on. Good deal, Tom. Thank you so much. And thank you all for watching today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you learned something. Hope you uh, stay out of trouble. Take care and we'll see you next time. Aloha.